Welcome to another Efficiency Matrix video and in this video we're going to be showing you how to install an internal air and vapour control membrane. So very typically this membrane is used in passive house construction to get very low airtight standards or just you're wanting to improve the comfort and the efficiency of your home and you might even be contemplating the use of a heat recovery ventilation system which really does require a house to be a lot more airtight. We'll concentrate specifically on installing the wrap. We'll do a horizontal install and a vertical install. We'll also be looking at all little details. So we'll be looking at the wrap junctions to floors, starting, internal, external corners in the building, what we do around windows and how we tackle penetrations where there's gonna be some services that we need to wrap and allow for in our installation. We've set ourselves up here with the materials we need. We've got our Proctor Passive Smart Fap. We've got the accompanying tape, the AB or the air barrier tape. We've also got our ladders and trestles and planks. We've also got our knives, scissors, staplers and so forth we need. So number one is to get yourself set up. And before we even start the job, once we've got everything here and ready to go, we've got to make sure the site's clean. I'm going to go around and just clean up around the floor because we are going to drop the wrap onto the floor. So we need the floor to be nice and clean for our adhesive junction to the floor. If you're on a site, and especially during winter with lots of mud on a site, you'll find that it gets terribly muddy and dirty on these concrete floors at ground level. You'll have all sorts of trouble trying to get adhesion to a very dirty concrete floor. One of the suggestions I'll make to you is that before you actually frame the walls, or once the walls are even framed, and before the site gets really muddy internally from a, a wintry site is to go around and just paint a little bit of a four inch strip of paint around the perimeter. That way we know we can clean it come the time of putting the wrap in and we'll get a great adhesion to the floor. As we've mentioned, we're using the Proctor Passive Smart Vap as our internal membrane. It's an airtight membrane, that's its primary objective as well as being a vapour control membrane. So what we're looking to do with an internal membrane is to allow for air tightness targets we're looking to, to hit, but also stop moisture from migrating into wall and roof cavities where it can collect higher humidity causing possible condensation issues, which potentially leak in cold climates to mould or sick building issues. So it's a very important membrane from an air tightness, but also from a building health perspective to manage that moisture that may migrate into wall or roof cavities. Combined with the wrap, we need to use the proper tapes. The wrap is one thing, but it's using the correct tape. So this is the Proctor Passive Air Barrier Tape. Now it comes as a 60 mil tape. So it also comes as the wider 75 mil tape. So you've got the choice of a wider 75 mil tape with split backing which you might find very useful for doing corners or junctions where you can release half of the tape, pre-fix it to the wrap, and then release the other half to give you a nice, sharp, well-detailed junction. Together with wrap and tape, what we do try to avoid is using staples. Now, we've been using staples for decades. What we will tend to do is staple the wrap top and bottom where we're gonna tape over the top. And in the midst of the wrap, if we need some sort of fixing, we'll really rely on these plastic buttons. We can put a small cloud or a screw, a little 25 mil screw through them. And that's gonna hold the wrap a lot better than using staples that commonly tear the wrap and obviously reduce the air tight and the moisture management function of the wrap itself. Rightio, so before we start the whole wrapping exercise, we've cleaned the site up, we've got our tools organized, we've got our gloves and our safety gear organized. What we're gonna do really is just drop a little bit of a flashing around the window opening. So we're making sure the external wrap has been dragged back into the window reveals and taped off. And then we're gonna put an internal gasket on using our smart vap, and we're very much just gonna place it halfway over the sort of stud opening internally. I'm going to staple it off. I'm going to tape it down here, turn it back into the building and then staple it off at 300 mil centers. We're going to turn it in at all the internal corners, nice and tight. And we're going to run a flashing right around the windows that as you can see, I've already started on this window. Now, 
we'll just tape around this window reveal. These tapes are incredibly sticky. They've been designed for this wrap and they've been designed and tested. These tapes adhere extremely well. You'll have never sort of experienced tapes like it until you start using these tapes out of Europe. Now it's important to use a little bit of a plastic spatula or a plastic tool to get your tapes hard into the corner. Tapes require pressure to activate the glue and to bond them onto the material that you're working with. Once the tape's been put on, I just give it the once over with a roller. Right, yeah, we'll push this tape again hard into the corner. We want it nice and square into the corners. We don't want it showing little curves and arcs. To finish off this flashing around the window, I'm just gonna make that little cut so we can fold it back nice and neatly. Just remembering with all work on site, you're working at height constantly all the time, no matter really what you're doing. So we've fitted our little flashing around the window. I'm just gonna run some staples down the side just to hold it in place because our wall wrap's gonna marry up with this later on. Just cut the corner. One of those little tricks you might like to use is the idea of using double-sided tape. So, what I tend to do with a lot of uh, installing of wraps, uh, in this case horizontally install, I'll put some double-sided tape at the very beginning, the corner and the very end, and probably pick every second or third stud in between. And really all I'm doing is just running down a double-sided tape, and this is the Proctor Passive G uh, Duo tape, just like that. And I'll simply sort of run down just to sort of get it to adhere to the stud properly. Then you can peel the backing paper off and you might find double-sided tape will be your best friend when you're trying to install wraps nice and neatly. To achieve a seal to the floor, we're gonna lap the smart wrap down onto the floor 30 mil. So given that the wrap is 1500 high, I've measured up 1470. So this, this line here on every second stud that I've applied it to just measures up 1470. So that guarantees our 30 mil lap onto the floor. So when we're installing the wrap in one piece, we're gonna go across the window wall and return back this way. I'm just gonna put some double-sided tape just below that pen line that we've made there so that we could just tack the wrap on to the right, right in the right position, just right on that line. We've put our double-sided tape, our duo double-sided tape on every possibly second stud, either side of windows, in the corners, just a little bit at the top, just enough for you to, John, I'll just get you to hold it up to the line yep. and just tack it on there and then we'll just follow the line along. I'll roll it out for you. And we will, again, as I said, just pull it tight, just drop it in below the line. We'll continue along to the corner lining it up with our pen line, pulling it tight, using the double-sided tape just to hold it in position temporarily, push it nice and tight into the corner and continue along. We've just rolled out our base layer and we've lapped it 30 mil onto the floor. We've measured up the 470 to allow for that 30 mil lap. We've put a little piece of double-sided tape under that line, just so we can just look back at it now and see that it's all positioned correctly. If we need just to adjust anything, I mean, it's really sitting nicely on these lines, to tell you the truth. I don't think we really need to touch it at all. This corner is a little bit low. I can normally just sort of release the double-sided tape and just position it, but that's looking pretty much spot on. We'll go along and we'll put a couple of staples in knowing that we're going to be overlapping the next roll of wrap over the top of the staples. So it doesn't hurt for us to throw some staples in to hold it in position. We're gonna be taping right around this window. So there's not gonna be any issue with me just running some staples nice and close to the edge of the window. We really need to position the wrap down towards the bottom of the floor as well. So I'm gonna just kneel down and come up about 100 mil and we're gonna put a staple in down the bottom here of each, each stud, but at least now we've got the wrap securely positioned to the wall. We're just gonna cut out the window opening at the moment. We're just gonna run the knife down, just making sure we keep it nice and clear of our sill wrap. Now we'll be taping over this junction. To guarantee that the internal wrap is continuous right around the building envelope, you're gonna be interrupted by internal walls that meet the external building envelope. 
and there's going to be a few of them. There's going to be 10 or 20 of these walls, depending on the size of the home. So what we've done is at the, at the, at the framing stage, we've asked the carpenters to install a gasket. So this is a poly damp proof membrane. It's available from any hardware store. This one is uh, 230 mils wide. So basically with 90 mil, it's hanging over uh, 70 mil either side. So what we're gonna do is a, bit, a little bit of double-sided tape again. We're gonna roll, we're gonna pre-cut the uh, wrap so it's a little bit over length. We're gonna, using the double-sided tape, position the wrap and then we're gonna trim it and then we're gonna tape the junction of the wrap to the poly gasket material. We're gonna tape that off so that we get a airtight junction and then on the opposite side, the wrap continues being cut, taped, and sealed. So now we have a continuous airtight membrane running around the house, and it's continuing behind each of the internal walls that abuts the building envelope. All we need to do now is to tape off the wrap to our gasket, and we've got ourselves a junction at each of the internal walls that is nice and airtight, secure. The gasket was put in by the carpenters, the gasket's happy to sit out in the weather. It's just a damp proof coarse material. To secure the wrap airtight to the floor, one of the suggestions is to run a corking bead right hard up against the bottom plate, like so. We've got a nice airtight seal wrapped to the bottom plate. Then we can just take a bead of, the, uh, of a corking. So we're very much going to create a double bead, one against the bottom plate, one wrapped to the floor. We're just putting the wrap up to the underside of the ceiling. We're just going to line it up with the joint in the pair of top plates. That way we can tape onto the top plate. I'm going to drop a staple into it up, up near the top, knowing we're going to overlap the ceiling wrap onto it. But we'll at least get a secure staple into it. We're going to be taping over the joint so we can afford to put a staple in. We can uh, again just trim the wrap around the window. Just to finish off around the window, it's all wrapped. We've cut out the window uh, wrap so we've got a split backing tape here. It's extra wide, 75 mil. We can uh, just release one side and we can just place the, place the tape, release the backing paper on the second piece. Fold it underneath and release the backing paper on the second piece all the way down. Just gently work your hand around it and you can fold it back into the window reveal. When installing wrap, it's horizontal typically, but it can also be installed vertically. Nothing to say you can't install it installed vertically. So that's really up to how you best want to work. Uh, one of the benefits of installing vertically, it's really a one man operation. So what you can do is drop the wrap on the floor, probably use a little bit of timber just to stop it rolling away. But as you climb the ladder, bringing the wrap up with you, let's just keep on climbing. We can get all the way up here. I'm going to release some double-sided tape that I've put across the top of the plate here. If I've positioned the wrap nicely on the floor, I'm simply just going to lift it up, line it up on the top plate, just manoeuvre the wrap across so it's looking reasonably straight. I'm going to drop a staple in here where that tape is, and that one there. Roll the wrap out. Bit of timber down, using it as a straight edge. There you go, trimmed off to the floor. But I'm just going to drop a few staples in so I'm not solely relying on the, on the double-sided tape. It's a nice, uh, a nice simple run when you're actually taping vertically. Got gravity working with you. You can follow the little green line in the wrap because that's 30 mil off the edge, the tape's 60 mil wide. And there we go, vertical install. We've looked at the wall wrap, doing horizontal and vertical. We've taped around a window. We've connected it to the floor. 
We've run our wrap internal corners and taped off to our internal wall gasket. So now it's just up to us to actually put some ceiling wrap up. And so that's what we're about to do. So again, we'll use some double-sided tape just so we can position the wrap with ease. And then we will, you know, we'll uh, trim and we'll tape it off. Again, just going to apply some double-sided tape. Keep applying double-sided tape whenever you feel as though it's going to help you out. In this case, we're going to measure the wrap first because it's just a bit difficult hanging on to the roll and the weight of the wrap above your head trying to handle it. So it's all uh, the trick is measure once, cut twice, measure once, cut twice, get the roll length just right so you don't make a mistake. Okay, Johnny. I've got Johnny helping again, so we're going to... Now, John, I'm going to position it first. So let's unroll it and I'm going to be making sure I've got it lapped down onto the wall and I want to have around about a 50 mil lap against the other wall. Double sided tape, run my finger along, we'll fold it down the wall. I found my double sided tape, I'll go along to the next one. I'll run along and put some staples in it and we'll yep. just secure it in position yep. before we start to tape it off. Particularly with the roof wrap, it'll cop a little bit of wind and weather through the, through the actual, possibly a leaky roof cavity, which roof cavities should be well vented anyway. So we tend to want to put these buttons in. I'll put a button in on every roof truss, probably halfway across the wrap. When you're wrapping internally for the air tightness and the moisture management, you want to avoid penetrating this wrap. And you also just can't stick plasterboard straight over a wrap. It's normally glue fixed or daubs of glue fixed plasterboard in place with a couple of screws. So the actual glue and the, so, and the plasterboard can't be installed direct to a wrap. So what's done is to batten over the face of the stud. This is a 45 mil batten. So you batten over the face of the stud, screw through, bury your screws into the batten. Then you can fix your plasterboard straight onto the batten making sure that any plasterboard screws you use are not too long, so no longer than the 32 mil typical bat, uh, plaster screw that they make sure you don't ever penetrate the wrap with a, glue, with a screw or a fixing. We don't need holes in the wrap. And once you've got a batten on, you've now got a services zone. So now you can run your electrical and plumbing in this 45 mil batten services zone for all your uh, electrical and plumbing needs. So all of that is inside the wrap minimum penetrations. When you do have a penetration through the wrap because you've got to get some electrical and plumbing to the outside, you put in a PVC tube like this one, like we put in a conduit. You cut the wrap very neatly around the conduit. We'll actually cut a patch now. So we'll put some corking around there. We'll cut neatly a patch over the top. We'll then cork over that junction again. We'll tape up around the patch and we'll patch around each one of those penetrations individually. So when we get to internal external corners, especially the internal corners, which can actually be damaged by people applying the batten to the inside. Timber battens generally, but if, especially if they're applying steel top hats, you'll start tearing the corners of the wrap quite easily. So it's a good idea. This is a, a 50 by 50 by 1.3 mil plastic angle. It's available from your plasterboard suppliers. So we just position that in the corner. Just push it hard into the corner and we can staple straight through it. And we've very much pressed the wrap hard back into the corner, protected the wrap from the future battening, whether it be timber battens or steel, steel top hats. So it's important when you're wrapping internally to achieve an air tightness target, if it's passive house or something tight enough to give you the comfort and the building health that you're after. This is time consuming and you wanna do it properly. You wanna be using the right products, the right tapes, have the right tools, have the right equipment to get to the heights and to the levels you need to be able to work the product correctly and get it right. We've looked at horizontal, vertical install, floor junctions, windows. We've got our angle and our penetration details. So if you take all that on board and you take your time and you're well set up, you'll achieve a fantastic result and I'm very much hoping you'll achieve the targets of Passive House and so forth that you're looking for.